All right, so welcome to another Hardware Canucks product showcase. What we're looking at today is the Zygmatech Midgard uh, with window option. Now they're well known for their innovative CPU coolers and they've now dived into the realm of computer chassis. The Midgard is the first case from the company and it incorporates sort of a unique exterior design as well as a few internal additions that supposedly make this case very easy to use. Now it's priced in and around $100, so it could be classified more on the low end of the mid-range cases in terms of price, but as we've seen with some of the previous product showcases, that is definitely not always an indicator of quality. So the question is, with their focus on cooling and generally good quality with the CPU coolers, translate into a really good computer case? Well here's hoping, so let's take a look. We move first to the outside. Out on the top we have the power and reset switches and activity LEDs. Five drive bay covers with dust filters and four external connections, audio jacks, uh, two USB and eSATA. Below that there is a 120mm LED intake fan which also has a dust filter. Uh, rotating to the side panel there's a rather jagged cut plastic side window and space to install any of the popular fan sizes from 80mm up to 140 at the back of the case at the top, they've included two holes for water cooling, another 120mm LED fan. Along the side, there's two other optional holes for water cooler as well. There are also seven PCI slots and a bottom mounted power supply. Flipping it to the bottom, you see rubber feet on the top in order to reduce vibration and to pick the case up off the ground. There's space for a 120mm fan inside the case and the screws can be used to remove the bracket if need be. Then at the bottom, underneath the power supply area, is a removable dust filter and some tiny feet. Now the included accessories are fairly simple, with the usual assortment of screws, a motherboard speaker, as well as some cable retention clips. And then they've included a backplate fan controller, um, with both 3-pin and Molex adapters. Now unfortunately we found that the metal construction of the case left a little to be desired. As you can see here with the front panels, it's not very rigid and there isn't much in the way of support, and this is evident throughout the case. Removing the side panel, take a look inside, you'll notice that the interior is completely black. Now these drive bays use a screwless tray system that, well, probably they should have used the screws. Alignment and fitment of the trays is less than stellar. In the main area, our PSU is at the bottom with foam on the back for vibration and then an easy clip system in order to install that 120mm fan. Up the side, some bright orange PCI retention clips and then another 120mm fan with brightly colored orange fins. And they've also included a rather large CPU backplate opening. Looking at the back, you'll see at the bottom spacing to run wires up the back of the tray and the tray is inset about a half inch so you're going to be able to run larger wires. They've also put the screwless drive locks on the back as well and this whole section is inset for more room. Now we get to assembly of the case, which is quite the adventure. We've managed to bend the drive bays back into position so they no longer fall down, however it seems they're still likely to fall out. Now one nice feature of the case is that it will support the newly released 11 inch long ATI 5870s, which is great for this mid-tower design. Now in order to install, just open up the quick PCI clips and make sure they don't fall out. Now while making sure the cheap plastic actually stays in, reclip them and well, maybe go back to using screws. And the case does have a hidden gem for water cooling. You are able to mount a 120 millimeter rad or a dual 120 millimeter rad internally at the top with two spaces for 120 millimeter fans. Wiring on the case isn't terrible, but the bottom 120 millimeter fan area is basically useless because that's where your power supply wires will sit. Otherwise, there is enough room to route stuff up the back and it keeps the middle area relatively clutter free for good airflow. Now airflow in the Midgard is fairly simple, in from the front and out the back. But if you fill up the three optional fan spots, you'll also be pulling air from the bottom and then exhausting it out the top as well. 
So that's a look at the Zygmatech Midgard, and here's our conclusion. On the plus side, it has uh, uh, foam for the back of the power supply, uh, lots of dust filters, and pretty colors. As a downside, it has overall relatively poor construction. Much of the metal is fairly thin and it leaves the case feeling like it doesn't have a lot of support. As a result, it really makes one wonder why this case is priced at $100 when unfortunately its real competition is about half that. And so that's this episode of the Hardwork Nux product showcase. Don't forget to hit that little yellow button up in the top right corner if you want to receive updates on future news and reviews. Also head over to www.hardworknux.com if you want the daily tech update and all of our written reviews. Thanks for watching.